I see that as really a symptom of an underlying issue. Uh, typically, the conversation will start with uh, you know people saying, I think the government should spend more on the particular uh, well national infrastructure or national service. So whether it's healthcare or education. And when the government explains that I have to balance a the budget, um, then the follow-on question will be, but I thought we have a lot of reserves. Aren't we getting enough of that? Uh, what, what actually is the size of reserves? So that's like the typical flow of the conversation. Um, I think we are privileged in that we do have reserves that we can draw investment income from, uh, which helps to fund our recurrent expenditure and, and to make those investments, long-term investments in infrastructure and so on. Uh, that's not a given because in many countries, um, most governments are finding it really tough just to balance the budget. Uh, so, understandably, there's curiosity around the size of the uh, but there is a limit to how much um, both the investment agencies uh, really should be disclosing uh, without compromising the very uh, existence, their very existence, I mean, in terms of the goals that are set or uh, If, for example, we uh, reveal completely uh, what the target investments are going to be or the sectors are going to be, in fact, they would not be able to achieve the very uh, you know, objectives that they are set up for. Uh, there are many people who are interested in the size of the reserves, not just our citizens. Uh, we really have to make sure that um, you know, that uh, objective is not compromised. Uh, having said that, I think the two investment agencies, the Master and GIC, should continue doing what the, uh, they've started doing, which is to share as much information as they can, uh, whether it's qualitatively or you know, um, in quantitative terms, if that does not compromise the position. Uh, they should attempt to, uh, you know, or they rather they should continue to do that uh, as best as they can, uh, and mainly to build up the trust uh, and to assure people that uh, the reserves are in good hands uh, and that, that they're really managing it so that uh, the government will continue to have a steady stream of income uh, to you know, uh, help finance some of the longer term initiatives which we otherwise might have to forego. Uh, the whole investment scene has become more competitive. Uh, there's basically a lot of capital chasing after uh, group investments. So the fact that they can continue to deliver is not a given. Uh, so I think the last thing that Singaporeans want is to compromise that um, ability. And in all the different places that I've been to, actually I've found that uh, there are fairly similar aspirations. Uh, depending on which part of the economic cycle they are at and also what sort of uh, circumstances, whether they are you know, um, moving from a very low income, uh, sort of uh, slow developing uh, area to a high sort of uh, city lifestyle. Mm. In a fast growing economic uh, situation, uh, aspirations sometimes tend to run slightly ahead uh, of what government can conceivably do or adjust to. Uh, and it's really not unique to us in Singapore. Um, and I, I sort of see this almost like two sets of escalators moving in the same direction. I mean, in our, in our case, because we've been experiencing a strong, steady growth, so it's almost like two escalators uh, moving upwards. Uh, perhaps the government on the one side trying to its best to manage uh, reserves, uh, well, resources, uh, trying its best to um, ensure that long term growth is there uh, and that Singaporeans enjoy a good standard of living. Uh, the other set of escalators uh, probably has uh, a few segments of uh, the population on it, uh, first by age group or social economic uh, backgrounds, uh, and they sometimes move at different speed. And I liken this to actually uh, you know, a situation where the government sort of, uh, tries to engage with the different segments which may have uh, certain issues or certain aspirations that they feel are not well met. Uh, and, and then the government trying to adjust and refine its policies and then after that engaging them and then uh, implementing them and then moving on. And then there'll be a newer group of aspirations that might take its place. 
and the government again having to you know uh, manage and engage them as well. Uh, the government, because its responsibility is to manage it on behalf of the country, would therefore constantly have to do trade-offs, um, uh, ultimately to live within our means and to make sure that we're going to be here for a long, long time to come. The, uh, well, the policy formulation aspects, because uh, there's always a new challenge because the world is evolving and uh, and it's nice to be able to add and you know uh, or contribute efforts to uh, a certain policy refinement, uh, which will then position Singaporeans uh, for the future. Uh, and of course, in order to do that, uh, obviously the interaction with people, uh, a wide spectrum of people, is, is also something that has been very uh, helpful to me as an individual as well.